sickeningly youthful, fit, tanned, handsome. And he's older than you. God, Piers I Morgan. hate you. You're a year older than me, Lo. It disgusts me every time I look at you. <laughs> I know. I knew. I, I knew. I'd be getting some great abuse the minute you got on with me, Pierce. Do you know, well, you you. know why you're getting it, Mr. Lone? I'll tell you I why. Do. You don't it's disgust my, anyone else, by the way. It's because my wife recently interviewed you for the Daily Telegraph, in which you revealed this bombshell about Prince William's hairline, which we'll be coming to. But she then, she <laughs> then Instagrammed this. If anyone's distracting enough you. to make you slice half your own head off, it's Mr. Lowe. Don't rush home, Piers. At which point, Piers, Piers tweeted back, get away from him <laughs> if you want to stay married. I said, you're never getting into a room in a confined area with Rob Lowe ever again. <laughs> which I, is I, why... my, I wear handcuffs. You don't need to worry about <laughs> that me. That makes it even worse. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're, now you're getting kinky with my wife. Stop it, man. Uh, Rob, it's great to, talk, great to see you. I've got to ask you, first yeah. of all, you were playing a police chief in an American police chief who comes to to Lincolnshire, to... and and my character just even though he's a law enforcement professional and obviously knows the the laws of law enforcement all around the world is completely taken aback when we have a standoff with an armed guy about to shoot a girl and there's nobody there in the police force to shoot and they have to wait for the one guy who has the gun to come up. So it's 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 really fun to juxtapose the American idea of law enforcement against the British. It's, well, see, we have a lot see, of fun see, you, and I, you and I have discussed this before, uh, the gun culture in America. To many people in Britain, yeah. as you know, it's a kind of baffling thing. We don't understand why Americans all feel the need to be armed like Rambo all the time. <laughs> when you live in America, and as I've done, and you, and you travel around middle America in particular, you realise it's a very deep-rooted cultural thing, that an yeah. American, their right to bear arms is very important to many Americans. Do you think it'll ever change in America? Well, I don't know, and, and, and you're right, that it is viewed so differently. We did a scene in Wild Bill where I had to shoot um, a bunch of very fancy guns, and they were, we're gonna have a technician come, and the technician's gonna show you how to hold it, and then you're gonna learn how to, and I was like, I'm an American, give me the damn thing. <laughs> um, but I, I, I don't think, I just think it's, it's such a part of, of, of American culture, particularly in, in certain parts of the country, that, mm -hmm. that uh, it's it just imbued with, with, with who we are. I mean, I don't think any of the buybacks or any of that would, would really ever work here. I'm fascinated that it did in England. It's really interesting. You're also, I know, fascinated uh, by politics. Um, and there's, in that little clip we saw there when you were asked to uh, talk about your views as that police officer, and it was, you know, remain or leave, and you said, oh, you know, mm. definitely in, definitely in. Of course, Boston, Lincolnshire, massive leave area. It's interesting that they touch on that, you know, is a political hot potato, of course, in the UK. We've seen an, a, a division that shows no sign of healing between being in or out on Brexit. Is it something that you, um, you know, were interested in before you came over, got more interested in while you were here? Fascinated with it. Mm. Um, when, when Brexit passed, I was watching Christiana Amanpour weeping <gasps> on television live. And um, and thinking this means Trump's going to win. Uh. I, I, I just I knew it in my bones. Mm. And then when I came to shoot Wild Bill, I was there from uh, November 1st to the end of March and was fascinated to watch Theresa May and the Commons. And every time I watched uh, and I think I might have watched every week, um, it was Groundhog's Day. Yeah. It was the same questions, the same answers and nothing changed. And uh, it, it was it was fascinating to watch from afar. But being in Boston, Lincolnshire, the perspective there was so much different than what I encountered with sort of my friends in London. Yes. And you really see the divide. It's, it's for real. But it's very similar, isn't it, to the Trump thing in America? You know, if you're in New York and L.A., it's just constant Trump bashing. A lot of the media is constant mm -hmm. Trump bashing because they're based in most cities. As I've done, I you know, travel around to Texas, to Florida, to Alabama, to places like that. Completely different perspective. They love Trump. Uh, it's a it's very, a, very different atmosphere depending on where you are. It's it's 100% like Brexit in, yeah. in the UK. Mm -hmm. It's very geographical. It's it's oftentimes very socio-economical. Um, and and yet, you know, when you get people talking about something that's not political. And it's not about Brexit or Trump. Everybody's, it's a love fest and we're all human and we all, you know, accept each other. But when you get into that, man, it gets ugly in a hurry. And it's that, and that, that frankly bums me out. Today. You, you might be single-handedly responsible for President Trump 
because in 2011, <laughs> well done. You actually told <laughs> Trump. Do? You actually told Trump in a phoner that he should run for president. It's your fault, I've made a, I, I Listen, I've clearly made a lot of jokes that have been misinterpreted. <laughs> <laughs> the joke is yeah. now in the White House. <laughs> what do you think of that? I mean, you know, many people, many Americans, when they come over here, because a lot of them are actors and they're liberals and so on, they paint a very depressing picture about how embarrassed they are about their country because of Trump and so on. Yeah. Trump's actually just come to Britain and had, by, by common consent, a very successful week. He seemed almost, dare I say it, uh, that he'd learned how to be presidential and had lots of good photo ops of the Queen and then, of course, the D-Day right. commemoration and so on. What, what do you think the feeling is? You've always been, I think, really, pretty fair-minded about Trump. You haven't joined in well, the I hysteria. I, I, there's a couple of, of, of thoughts I have. One is um, there's an old saying in politics when politics used to be civil and uh, cooler heads prevailed that politics ends at the water's edge, which meant you don't go to a different country and slag your home country. Mm -hmm. If you want to slag America, you do it when you're in America, but you certainly don't go to Britain to, make, to do it in America. So I'm, I'm never going to be one of those actors that's going to talk smack about my own country on British television. Mm -hmm. Um, because that's the way I was raised with, with politics. Mm -hmm. And that's the way politics ran for years and years and years. And then the other part of it is, is you know, there are, it, it's so divisive. People are so angry. Mm -hmm. They're so dug in. And it begins to seep into every element of our lives. And, you know, there was a time when, when actors could, could, could do that and it, and it didn't, draw the sort of lightning that it does. I, mm. I grew up idolizing Paul Newman and mm. idolizing Robert Redford and idolizing Warren Beatty. They were activists, big time. Mm. But there wasn't this level of vitriol directed at them mm. for, for, for having political views that you have today. It is a different world. But I see, and I would argue, yeah. Rob, I would Piers argue... Morgan is one of those well, who, would, who well, well, aims his fire at actors who well, are I would political. Argue, well, no, I, lo I love actors, as you know. I've, I've a massive who fan of political. yours, for example. But I, I do think it's a two-way street. I do think the level of abuse and vitriol that's been spewing from some of the mouths of some of the actors has been completely unacceptable. I do think that that's what? contributed to this hysterical 100%. kind of atmosphere, you know? Now, the, the, the blame is on equal sides, 100% for, for sure. You definitely wouldn't have seen Paul Newman with some of the quotes that you could dig out uh, with, with some of my peers, for sure. Mm. Um, the, the, the West Wing was my favourite ever drama. I've told you this many Thank times. You. I bumped into Aaron Thank Sorkin you. on a flight recently, and uh, it was quite comical because the president of Ukraine, the new president, had turned out to be a comedian who had taken uh. part in a sitcom in which he played a guy who accidentally becomes the president of Ukraine. Couldn't make and it up. And Aaron knew part of that story, but wasn't aware of the, of the sitcom he'd been in. And we both burst out laughing at the kind of absurd way that global politics appears to be going, where TV stars in America become president, comedians in Ukraine have become president. Many people in America, and indeed around the world who love the West Wing, yearn for a kind of President Bartlett, yearn for you, to be strutting around the White House, looking like a Greek god. Sam Seaborn. Uh, you know, <laughs> what's the presidency that you guys portrayed? Is that realistic in the real world, or is it a lot tougher? Well, it was all, even in its era, it was always wish fulfillment mm. and a sort of objectified version of the White House. But, but I think today it would play out as science fiction. Yeah. Um, mm. but, but maybe that's exactly the reason to do it. I mean... I know that it just hearing people talk, being out in the world, more people talk about the West Wing at this very moment than they have in the last few years. Mm -hmm. So something's going on that, that people are finding it and having comfort in it and rediscovering it. And that's, that's great because I, I'm so proud of the show. And if Aaron ever thinks of a way to redo it, um, I'm there. I would re oh. respectfully suggest he... He listened to his own writing where Bartlett said, Sam, you'll be president one day. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea to me. You know what? I think, I think Aaron has been tempted to do something related to the West Wing, whether it's a complete reboot or just a, uh, an offshoot to it. I think he is quite tempted. And it was certainly the best acted of all the dramas about American presidency, if of any drama I've seen. It was fantastic. We can't let you go, Rob, without mentioning this bombshell that you unloaded in this interview with my wife about... Prince William's hairline. You got incredibly exercised. It's the great about... traumatic experience of your life was watching Prince William lose 
his hair. Well, see, this is my thing is, I think this is a case, because I saw the, the hubbub it caused yeah. on, on in your side of the pond, and I think it's a case of uh, a common language. Uh, what is it, two countries divided by a common language? Because mm. that was literally me slagging my own insecurity and narcissism. He's a stud. <laughs> I love him. He's awesome. <laughs> Rob, we've got to leave it, not least because the, the female viewers of this show that normally gravitate uh, to me are now <laughs> gravitating to you in a, in a breathtakingly unpleasant manner, and I would like to stop that and remind them who's really doing this show. Senior uh, Walden being one of them. Yeah, my wife will be one of them. It's the first time my wife's got up and watched this show for a few years, I can tell you that. Uh, Rob, great to talk to you. Wild Bill starts tonight on ITV, 9pm. Brilliant to see you on British TV. You. You're one of the nicest guys in the business and it's great to see you. How's your golf? Because I, I, I keep I'm hearing you, you want a game and uh, you I'm, keep I'm coming it. back. If, if we do season two, it's you and me. We'll play for charity and ITV needs to televise it live. You know what? I like <laughs> this. I like this. I'll bring Trump along and we'll bring Richard Schiff, Toby Ziegler. Because if he and Trump okay. are on the same golf course, all hell will break loose. <laughs> Rob, exactly. great, great to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. We appreciate it. Thanks so much. And Sam Seaborn for president. Oh, that sounds like a he series. is a horribly good-looking man for a guy of 55, <laughs> isn't he? He's I'd a take year older than me. I mean, seriously. Sentence.